I saw this TikTok last night and I've been like cracking up at it ever since, but welcome to this morning's Get Ready Without Me. Welcome to another week in my life vlog. Hi, I'm Anna. If you do not know me, I'm a licensed master level social worker currently working in a children's hospital as a pediatric medical social worker. And we got home today and then went to the grocery store. So I have a Quest frozen pizza currently in the oven. It is now preheated. And then I also got a red velvet cake slice that I figured I would start nibbling on while I catch you up on the day work. So even though I started, it's been six weeks, maybe more than six weeks, seven weeks, I believe now, since I began my job, they have a long training program basically, which is rare in social work profession, I feel like. But I think since I work in a hospital, it's almost as if like nursing preceptorships and that type of thing, I feel like kind of starts to bleed over into my training, which is fine because if I were to choose to get, you know, thrown to the wolves, you just like don't know what you're doing, all of a sudden you get families and you have no idea like what you're supposed to be doing with them, how to document it, anything versus like really, really getting to like dive in deep observing before actually doing it yourself, then I definitely prefer the training period. But I've kind of talked in previous vlogs how this job just moves a lot slower than my previous one. So I'm still getting used to that, to be honest. That being said, I didn't like do too much today. <laughs> we have ICU rounds every day just because with the high acuity of care in the ICU, patients' plans can change every day. And so it's just good to kind of like get an update. They're quick rounds, they're interdisciplinary rounds. It's not with the doctors, it's just with social work, child life, chaplaincy, the kind of supportive services. We had those today and then I shadowed, observed one of my coworkers while she went and talked to three families who had kids who were having surgery today. They try to make sure to check in with the families who are coming in for surgery because for some of them it's their first time in the hospital and so just making sure they know about the different services available to them to you know improve the experience while they're there. Sometimes you can begin kind of assessing for psychosocial needs as they may come up and then once I start getting like for real families of my own then like if they come in on surgery in their mind then like I'll follow them through the ICU and then into the step down unit and then when they get discharged or like until they get discharged not after they get discharged so did that and then i only have one family of my own right now reached out to that mom today didn't reach her so i didn't actually do anything today this is something else that i've kind of talked about in recent videos but in my previous job my position specifically was very like life or death adrenaline inducing running around and in the hospital there obviously are life or death positions but social work is not one of them and so i'm so used to being like oh i have to see this person today and like document it i have to seek them out and everything Whereas in my current position, it's like, oh, they're not, I couldn't reach them today. That's okay. I'll try again tomorrow. So I'm getting used to that, but I'm excited for the week. It's a full week. Last week was the holiday week. This week is a full week. And so I don't know what's going to happen in it, but it's like when you start a Monday night off with some cake, <laughs> it adds a hundred points, a hundred points to the night.
Zach is at our leasing office right now because we had to get our kitchen disposal replaced. It like totally was leaking over the weekend. I never mentioned it because there's more interesting things. But we put in a maintenance request and yesterday we got a call during the day and the leasing office was like, can you please bring us a copy of your key? We forgot to make copies before we gave you your key. So like our apartment complex, I guess, could not get into our apartment, which is kind of funny. It makes me feel like a homeowner, you know, like it's mine. But yesterday we took them the key. So then theoretically today they made a copy of it and then <laughs> our kitchen disposal all got replaced and then now Zach is going to get our actual keys back from them. So fun, so interesting, I know. Tonight for dinner, I'm making a like tofu rice bowl. And then I also am planning to run and that's all I have on the docket, which is pretty exciting, pretty fun. At work today, I now have two families that are officially mine, just my own. One is getting surgery today, so they came in today. So I just checked in with the family and then we'll check more in with them as they are in the ICU and then move down to the septum unit and then theoretically pretty soon get discharged and then I also got to catch up with a mom who I hadn't got to meet yet and so I had like actual patient family interactions today mostly just like getting to know the families instead of like addressing you know deep psychosocial needs or anything so I documented everything it was good I kept myself a little bit busier than I have some previous days and then no idea what the rest of the week looks like I know tomorrow we have a CEU event which is a continuing education unit which is required when you have a license to renew your license each state has different requirements in Georgia I need a I believe 35 CEU hours within two years to renew my license. Five have to be ethics hours. 15 of them have to be core hours, which just means like they're social work specific. And then 15 of them can be like other disciplines, like if it's psychology or professional counseling, like it can be in other disciplines, I believe is what that means. But that's tomorrow that I have that. And then tomorrow I also have supervision for my license with my supervisor, individual supervision. In my job, I get both individual supervision, just like general group supervision. And then I also go to a perinatal social work group that I believe counts as group supervision but I need to check that because it is with an LCSW who oversees it honestly though with supervision hours only I think it's like up to half of them can be group supervision in Georgia remember everything I say is specific to Georgia because every state is so different and at my previous job I got a lot of group supervision hours so I don't think I need as many group supervision hours because I have so many at this point and only half of them count that's a lot of technicalities that's not the interesting stuff I'm gonna get started on dinner so it can be done soon and I can go for my run I feel like I can't fully relax in a day until I have like everything that I want to get done done which probably is a character flaw but it also means that like I try to get everything done just like right away so that then I can have that moment of like okay I'm good for the day <laughs> and I really want that moment to be happening like right now but I have a few things I need to do before I get there show you guys and I didn't I guess I just forgot yesterday but yesterday when I got to work they were having a yard sale for like old swag that I guess people donated I'm not sure what they did and it was really just like this one rack in front of our unit secretary's desk that you could just like browse through and then just like Venmo someone because I think it's for like the engagement community it's for like a donation for something but it's hard to show you like exactly what I got because it's so super branded but I wanted to try anyways I told myself that I wasn't going to buy like swag whenever I started because they always say like you're going to get so many t-shirts just from like working here so I was like okay I'll just wait for the t-shirts to roll in I won't spend money but then these t-shirts were five dollars and I got them so this one I'm showing you the back <laughs> this one is a purple tie-dye long sleeve tee which I'm excited it's a medium so it's gonna be very comfortable I think I've mentioned before that I can wear scrubs in a t-shirt and like scrubs in a hospital t-shirt or a kid friendly t-shirt like if it were Disney or like something like that or business casual so like out of those two options scrubs is a great option this one is like low-key kind of a vintage tee. I feel like, yeah, you can literally see through it. <laughs> 
It has the old logo. It is so soft. Like I cannot express to you exactly how, I, whenever I was going through the rack, I felt the shirt and I was like, yep, that one, <laughs> you're coming home with me. So I'm also very excited for that one. And then I also got these fixed pants. Remember I have two fixed pants. One's the purple ones that I wore Monday. One are pink ones that I'm wearing today. And then now I have some more neutral ones. It's a gray. There's like a little bit, you really can't see it because my lighting is not great right now. There's like a little bit of texture to the color, but they are the technical collection. So I don't know if that, I don't know what that means actually at all. And they're smalls. I thought they were small petite actually, because that's what I got for my last ones, but they're not. So they're gonna be a little bit long on my legs. My purple and pink ones are both like petite pants. I'm 5'3", so people have longer legs than me. These ones like go down a little past my foot, but since it's joggers, I'll just be able to pull them up and they'll just be like more room in the calf or something. I'm gonna wash them all before I wear them, which is a bummer because I'm really excited to wear them, but I wanted to share that. I'm getting ready early this morning. I woke up at maybe like 5.30 and our goal is to leave by seven. We're usually leave by like 7.20, so it's not the hugest difference in the world at all. But because they're doing like a monthly series for the cardiac floor that's called dissecting defects. And so it's just like each month is a different defect and a different doctor presents on it. And it's just like invited for anyone who works on the ICU or the CACU. Obviously as social work, I'm not the medical professional, duh. But it is kind of nice to have like a working knowledge of different things. And this morning's is on heterotaxy syndrome drama which when I heard that I was like I feel like I've heard that before like what is that and then I looked it up and so it clicked <laughs> you could also just say I learned from Google but in my head like I already knew it a little bit but heterotaxy syndrome and my current understanding of it is whenever like the organs inside are flipped around somehow like whether your heart is on the different side than usual or maybe like the top half of your organs face one direction the bottom half face a different direction which obviously can complicate things especially whenever whenever it is generally assumed that your organs are where they're expected to be so it'll be cool they have chick-fil-a breakfast and it starts at 7 30 so that's why we're leaving pretty early i think it goes maybe to like 8 30 or so and then i also have the ceu today that i was telling you about i think it's like called all hands on deck like that's the title of the presentation but i don't know what that means for us <laughs> like what we'll actually be learning about but i know that this type of ceu is for ethics hours that i was mentioning yesterday there's a couple home things that have changed since the last vlog that i haven't like officially shown you yet but one of them is that this mirror is here and i think i like it there and then also so I moved all of the stuff that had been sitting over here, which is very nice. It is just in the study now. So like it's still not all put away, but it is not just like staring me down all of the time, which is quite nice. We also got a few decoration items for our dresser upstairs. So at some point this week, I'll make sure to remember to show you what we got. And then also kind of show you like the vision for whenever we are like truly decorating instead of focusing on like the functionally necessary things. Only a time machine could save us now. I can only chat until my camera dies, which is going to be soon because it is blinking very angrily at me. And somehow I don't know where I put my battery charger. So, or the second battery, to be honest. So I'm gonna have to find those, but happy Thursday, long time no chat. You're looking at a girl who is doing like real social work things now. I know my training period was kind of a long time. I'm still training, I'm definitely training. But today I actually had like enough to do on my own that it felt like a full day. So that was fun. And the fact that I could handle it. Yesterday at work, I went to the heterotaxi thing that I was telling you about. It was a little bit over my head, but I still feel like I learned something. 
things, a couple of things. We also had the CEU event. It turns out that it was about like the benefits of working in an interdisciplinary team. So that's what that was. And then I also had a supervision meeting with my supervisor yesterday, which was so good and just got like feedback and talking about what's coming up and continuing my training and continuing like slowly adding families to be mine. And as of now, I believe I'm up to four, which is an increase, definitely an increase. But today I felt quite busy at work. And so it was kind of a lot of little things that just added up. I had two surgical patients, one who is getting ready to discharge tomorrow. So it was just kind of like a last check in, see if I could do anything, just kind of like finish out like full circle that relationship, you know? Another, I had previously talked to the family yesterday during surgery. And so it was just like a check in afterwards, see if they needed anything type of deal. And they didn't. So it was more just kind of like establishing rapport, you know, trying to make the experience at least a little bit easier. I performed a psychosocial assessment today and I also collected some resources for a family. And so I was able to talk with the family about the resources that I had collected and kind of like guide them to the right avenues to pursue applying for different like benefits or assistance as they decide they want it. And then there are a few things that I would like apply for on behalf of families, but there's also quite a few things that like families would apply for. And then if they have questions that come up or struggles that come up, we can like support them through it. But usually if it's like a foundation or something that seeks to like assist financially families who have children in the hospital, lots of times that'll be me like applying on behalf of the family, kind of like referring them to the foundation, but then for lots of assistance type things, it really more so is like they can do it and then we can just assist as needed. Cause then like when they're outside of the hospital, they're gonna have to be able to do it by themselves, you know, anyways. And so it's easier if they already know like, okay, I go to this website, I log in this way, that type of deal. So really that was a lot of today. I feel like this week's been like boring as far as filming goes and that's why I haven't as much, but also it's been like a really good week for me just in like routine wise. On Tuesday after work, I ran five miles just like casually after work. I remember whenever I couldn't do like a hop, skip and a jump in a row without wheezing. It's wild looking at like the progress that has occurred with the running. But then I just, I got home, I showered, I started reading in bed and then like went to bed. And then yesterday when I got home, I just like laid on the floor and watched Grey's Anatomy for a couple hours before I went and met people on the belt line again for running club. And then today, like I got home, I made dinner, just ate dinner. I'm watching Grey's Anatomy again. And then around seven or so, I'm gonna go for a run. And then when I get home from the run, I'm just gonna read and chill. I've been thinking a lot lately about how I feel like nine to five life gets like such a bad rep, but like I love nine to five life. I feel like if you think about it, it's like, oh yeah, 40 hours, like you wake up and you have to go to work every day and then you get home from work every day. And it's such a long time. But just thinking about like the amount of things that we do, like imagine yourself in high school or at least like definitely me in high school where I was at school for like, the same hours and I'm at work now, but then I had like a bajillion homework assignments to do, was super stressed, like had extracurriculars going on, various clubs, was working out, was still trying to have a social life. Like I was so much busier back then and so much like less rest and then even thinking in college like you have classes but then you have homework and then for social work you have internship too and so like for my master's program I was going in pretending to have I guess even my bachelor's too going in having like a full work day alongside people who are just there working but then like I would go home and have to go to class and have to do assignments have to do homework and write papers and prepare for presentations and then actually work on the weekends as well so I could make an income and granted whenever I worked my previous job I did have a lot of time as well but I also think that with the irregularity of that schedule it was just harder to have a set routine and I think that's where my brain feels rest lots of times it's like in that set routine and so I love being able to like wake up in the morning I've been waking up like maybe 5 45 6 which gives me enough time to just like casually pretty slowly get ready like make breakfast make coffee wash my face and do makeup put on an outfit and then like leave probably like 7 7 15 ish and then I've been clocking in more close to like 7 45 technically I get in to work at eight, but I've been clocking around 7.45 and I'm there until about 4.30 and then get home maybe around five and then from five to 9.30 and I go to bed so early. Like that's four and a half hours that a lot of things can fit in and even like multiple things. Like I can lay on the ground and watch Grey's Anatomy and then also go for a run and then like also read. Like the fact that it's like you get to spend your time doing things that kind of fill you up and are fun or relaxing or something. I guess the challenge with that is like finding out which things are fun and relaxing and good to you because 
because obviously like my perfect evening would not be everyone's perfect evening. But I just wanted to like speak some positivity, I guess, into the nine to five life. Like it's not perfect for sure, but I have, I do not hate working full time because working full time feels like so much less than what I've been doing, you know, in previous years leading up till now. I really need to find that camera battery. I'm sure you noticed the change We're on my phone now, but I really need to find that camera battery because I've already looked for it. Like I've looked pretty thoroughly for it and I can't find it, but I know I've used it in the new apartment. So I know it had to have made it over here, but I guess until further notice, we will be iPhone vlogging it. Happy Friday, still another iPhone camera day until I find my camera batteries. But I woke up kind of early this morning and then I made a smoothie for breakfast and I also have a little coffee here. And then I have my book here, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, obviously a reread for me. I'm reading the illustrated editions. To be honest, I feel like the fourth one has had the least amount of illustrations in the book so far as like compared to the other ones. Like the other ones would be, it'd be like every other page would just be like this beautiful picture about like what's going on and it's like painted and colored and just like honestly gorgeous and this one it's maybe like every seven or eight or even like 10 pages is when they have the full spreads and there's like a couple small pictures sprinkled throughout but i feel like it is not as full of beautiful pictures as the other ones have been but i've been reading this mostly while i've been at home and then i have an ellen hildebrand book that i've been bringing to work with me because that would be way too big to lug around in my work bag but something that i've been thinking about lately and i feel like was really big yesterday i saw sierra lynn talk about it i watched her vlogs on youtube well i started backlist so like i haven't made it i've made it up to april in her vlog i don't know what she's up to in current day but i know she's up to in april but she's a registered nurse in the emergency department but there's just a vlog that she was talking about this and it really stuck with me but i feel like we put a lot of like values on our days of like how much you're supposed to give in a day and then like feeling bad if it's less like feeling like oh i have to give my 100 percent every single day which means that like i'm going i'm like always improving I'm always getting more done or like it came up yesterday with my run like if I was giving like oh my 100% top level every single day that would mean like I'm always going faster on those tempo runs or like I'm always pushing harder I'm like less out of breath and something that she was talking about is that there's like no requirement for us to give like way top level like best of the best every single day but really it's just you have to give like whatever effort you have in that day and so for example yesterday I was pretty tired and also it's a Thursday so like we've done the whole week Week up until Thursday it was the third day in a row that I was running and so in the Nike Run Club guided run speed tempo run that I was doing they'll say like okay like we're doing like one minute of mile pace and that should be a nine effort or we're doing two minutes of 5k pace and that should be about a seven effort and to be honest like I was going very very slow especially whenever they'd be like mile pace like my mile pace was probably just barely faster than what sometimes I'll just like run regular like on a long run or something and I think that's something that it would be easy to beat myself up about like in the past I feel like my running journey has like led me to be a lot healthier mentally too but I just kept reminding myself and so like I felt totally fine about it is that like my whenever they say give a nine effort that doesn't mean like out of the best that I've ever done like out of my PR you know back in like, junior year of high school whenever I ran a fast mile that I have to give a nine effort of that pace it literally means like today with what I got going on in my tank what I got in the energy realm of things I could just give a nine of what I can give and since yesterday since I was so tired like if I was full-on sprinting it would not have like it would have been like a mile jog <laughs> just because my legs were tired and you know it was hot everything that was going on like the days are different and so the like performance each day is going to be different and so my nine effort yesterday was a lot slower than what my nine effort might have been some other days but what matters is that like I gave what I could of that effort that I had yesterday or like my seven effort was quite a bit slower than my seven effort would be some days. And I think that's important to carry out in life, like not even just for running or for working out, but even just thinking like headed into a work day. Like obviously it's important to give what you can in a day, but my 100% is not gonna be the same every day. I think for a lot of us, like towards the end of the week, your 100% might be a lot less than your 100% was on Monday. Or if you feel like Monday is just like a dragging day, but then you kind of pick up the rest of the week, 
week, then maybe like your Wednesday is the top day that your 100% is higher that day than your 100% for Thursday or for Friday. And that's not a value decision like on you as a person. It's just the basic fact that like days are different. And so there's no shame in, oh, I was so productive yesterday. And then like today I could barely do anything. Like, yeah, of course. Cause I guess if you had, if your 100% was higher yesterday, then today is gonna be different. And that's not, oh, today's a good day or oh, today's a bad day. It's just kind of recognizing like what you can give in a day and then like what you would benefit from in a day. So those are my thoughts that I was having. Something about sitting up with the iPhone makes me feel like I'm like preaching. I don't know why that more so than the camera, but. <laughs> Happy Saturday morning. I'm about to go run nine miles, which will be the longest I've ever run in my life. Last weekend, my long run was eight miles. And at that point, that was the longest I've ever run in my life. But I have my running vest all set. I have water. You can't see it. In the back though, there's a water bladder. I have Honey Stinger Energy Chews in here. What my strategy was last week and what I think I'm gonna be doing again is just every other mile hydrating or fueling. And so on this one, I believe it'll be hydrating on even miles and fueling on odd miles. Cause then it just reminds me to do so. And I'm just doing it the entire way through. And then both my sports bra and my shorts, I got an Amazon order from last week's vlog. miles successfully today which is wild and i never thought i would be able to say that i did that i'm going to pick up zach now he had to drop his car off earlier to go get an oil change and i like finished my run showered tried to move as quick as i could obviously was not moving quickly but um, he's at a coffee shop now so i'm gonna go pick him up and then after that we're going to a cvs so that i can try to find the foundation that i've had for the past year and that i really love but that is seemingly out of stock at walmart target ulta basically everything except for CBS's in the area. So that's the quest for this morning. I know I promised what feels like forever ago, like early on in the week that I would show you what's changed in the apartment since there's been so many moving type vlogs happening around. And so the biggest thing honestly that's changed is that there's not a whole row of stuff right here anymore, which is amazing for the living room, makes it feel great. There is still stuff that I need to attend to. I mean, beyond the laundry, but that's that's temporary. This is still some bags that just need like, where should I put baby Yoda? Where in the new apartment does he belong? We're still kind of figuring that out. I still have haven't put this in all of the cabinetry yet. Over in the study, there's still a few things that aren't gonna live here forever. Our, my goal is to have a comfy chair here, like a wing back chair or something that I can curl up in and have a good time. That's my goal. Obviously, it'll take a second. And then going upstairs. I have laundry to put away. <laughs> Got our air purifier going. Love this little guy. But we did start to get a few decoration things for this last weekend. These are the things we got that I really like. My favorite, I haven't cut his tag off yet. My favorite is this little thinking guy. I don't know why. I just really like him as a decoration. And then we got this one and that one. That one's a little bit smaller. That candles or lights can go in, whether real candles or even just like fake candles for the vibe. And then this is a picture frame. I probably shouldn't put my finger straight on the glass. <laughs> this is a picture frame that Zach really liked. This is just the stock photo in it. We haven't put an actual picture inside it yet. So I feel like things are coming along. Like obviously there's still progress to go and we haven't hung anything up or like any gotten any decorations besides those ones but i feel like it's very much like livable right now and this was the first week last weekend my goal was really to make things be okay functional where we're not just like tripping over boxes to get everywhere and so i feel like this week was the first week that it was that way and i really am appreciating that and loving that we still have
have, today makes two weeks since we purchased our couch and they said six to eight weeks. So it's still four to six weeks until our couch will get here, which feels like such a long time <laughs> just to be laying on the floor. But if I get like a wingback chair or something before then, then there's that and I can hang out there. It just hasn't happened yet. I also have not found my camera battery yet. I've been going like, I've been going through every bag looking for it. I don't know where I put it, but I know it made its way into this apartment because I know exactly like which video clip it died in and I switched out the camera battery and what did I do with it? I don't know.